list of five things that I think everyone who is looking into getting a Caucasian Alcharca should at least keep in mind before they make this purchase. Okay. First of all, this is not a dog for a first time dog owner. This is, it would be kind of like getting your turning 15, getting your driver's license, and learning how to drive behind the wheel of an 18 wheeler. Probably do it, but not going to be the best experience for anybody. These dogs need someone who has, a, has an experienced hand at least raising a big dog. Um, they're going to need you to spend a lot of time with them. They're going to need daily training. They're going to need to get that energy out every day so that they are relaxed and rested and uh, you know feel a little bit more comfortable living in an environment other than being a herd guardian. Um, they have a, they're extremely strong-willed animals. They I don't want to say they, they don't obey, they don't listen, because they are very eager to please, but they are kind of like the kid that always asks why. Um, they'll do it, but they want to know why. Um, and basically, you just got to love these guys to death. This has to be one of those breeds that you get into it knowing full well kind of what you're getting into. Um, speaking of that, you know, their size. These guys, give me just a moment. Come here, boy. These guys are never small. This is a 13 week old puppy. He gets a baby. And they grow very, very fast. But they give sweet kisses. I love you too. I'll put you back down. Oh, um, they, they grow extremely fast. I mean, he went from being. Uh, less than 10 pounds when I got him to being over 40 pounds now and that's just a matter of about seven weeks uh, they will double it feels like they double in size every time you turn around and this is a breed of dog that it's it's very possible for them to hit 200 pounds um, third thing grooming as far as dogs go they are fairly easy to groom uh, it doesn't really take more than just brushing them out um, it's not one of those dogs that have to have special shampoos or conditioners or anything like that. They just need to have a good brush brought to them, um, you know, about as frequently as you can, every couple of days. Um, I like to say you groom early, groom often. You know, getting used to taking baths, getting used to having somebody mess with them, uh, that's the biggest thing is getting these guys used to that, that kind of procedure of getting groomed. Um, their fur itself, if you ever remember those uh, denim jackets from the 80s and 90s, they had that white cotton on the inside. Uh, that's what their fur feels like. It's very coarse, very, very thick. It is a double coat, and it acts a lot like Velcro. If they go outside and lay in something, they're coming back in with everything that they touched. Um, and for some reason, that fur seems to suck it in deeper, so uh, it takes a little bit to sit there and pick out all the stuff that's in it. Um, also, with them having the double coat, you're not gonna be able to shave these guys. So keeping them trimmed down and keeping them um, you know, brushed out is going to be very important. And if you do take these guys to a groomer, you're going to want to find a groomer that you can keep long term, somebody who will be able to groom the animal uh, for the entire time you've got them, you know, preferably. Uh, these guys tend to like one person at a time, and hopefully, you find a groomer that likes him and he likes uh, them, and everybody gets along great. Um, fourth thing feeding. Having one of these dogs is basically like feeding two dogs. Um, as big as they are, they're about the size of two large dogs. It's going to cost more to keep these guys fed. So anytime you're making a purchase, you always got to think about the, the auxiliary costs that you're going to have. I mean, there's not, if you buy a cell phone, you're not just buying the cell phone. You're buying the, the plan that goes with it. And on top of that, you're paying for all the little accessories that come with it. And on top of the accessories, you're paying for the electricity when you plug it into the wall to charge it. So I mean, there's always extra costs. And with feeding these guys, um, the cost will be higher, not only because they're probably going to need more food, but they'll need a higher quality food. Um, we feed this guy a raw diet, and you'll see one of the other videos that I'll link to uh, that shows uh, exactly what we feed Tyr. And with Tyr, he gets a lot of raw, feed, uh, raw meat into his diet. Um, the days of just going out back and scooping out a cup of kibble and pouring it out in the bowl for him, but this breed, that's pretty much over. Unless you get a really high quality uh, dry food, the days of just taking a scoop of food and dumping it out for them, not really gonna happen anymore. 
Um, and the, the fifth thing I want you to keep in mind is if you do finally decide to get one of these dogs, look for a breeder who you feel comfortable buying from and who feels comfortable selling you one of these dogs. Um, whenever you talk to a breeder, the interview should kind of go both ways. You're going to want to talk to them, make sure they're not running some sort of you know, illegal puppy mill where they're just you know, cranking out dogs to try to make money on it. And at the same time, you want to try to, you want to hope that this person at least asks you questions to try to gauge whether or not you are prepared for one of the responsibilities that come with one of these animals. Um, I bought mine from Scott's Caucasian Shepherds uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Eric Scott is a great guy. I have a link to his uh, website uh, in the description of this video. And, he, you know, me and him, we actually became pretty good friends over about a four month period while I was waiting on this guy to get ready to come home. Um, and basically, whenever you're talking to a breeder, that they shouldn't have anything that they're kind of leery of showing you. You know, if you ask for pictures of the parents, boom, pictures of the parents. If that picture of the parents seems like it's, you know, taken in a corner where, so that you can't see who you are or can't see where these dogs are kept, um, might be a little bit of a red flag. Uh, I know with Eric, he sent me um, videos, pictures, anything I wanted to see. Um, and he was close enough that I could go down there and actually pick up the dog, you know, in person. So that was great. But anyways, um, like I said, these are just five things to kind of keep in mind. It's not things I'm going to say that are essential or you have to do or must do. Just things that I've noticed in having one of these animals and that you will probably notice too. And, uh, you know, if you do end up getting one of these animals, best of luck. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask us on the website. Thanks.